Hello and welcome back to Chapter 3. Today we're going to look at Section 3.3, which deals with properties of logs. As we've already mentioned in Chapter 3, your calculator only has two types of log keys. One is the base 10, or the common log, and the other one is the natural log, or base E. So in order to evaluate other logs on your calculator, we need to use what we call the change of base formula. Now the change of base formula says that if A, B, and C are positive real numbers such that neither A or B are equal to 1, then log base A of X can be converted to a different base by using one of the following methods. One is if we have a base B. In other words, it's anything other than base 10 or a base E. So we'd get log base A of X equals log base B of X divided by log base B of A. So in other words, we're, con we're taking the log of this x, dividing it by the log of that a. If we want to convert to a base 10, then we're going to take the log of base 10 of the x and divide it by the log of base 10 of the a. Or, and these two here are really equivalent here, if you're given a log, you can also use natural log. So natural log of x divided by the natural log of a will give you the change in base as well. So let's go ahead and look at example one, which deals with the change of base formulas. To start out with, for part A, we have log base 3 of 16 is equal to what? Well, if we want to use the change of base formula, we're, and we want to put this on our calculator, we're going to have to convert it to either a base 10 or a base E. So let's convert to a base 10 first. So I'm going to take the log base 10 of 16 and divide that by the log base 10 of 3. Now notice this 16 is coming from this right here and this 3 is coming from the base of this log. Now because both of these, this right here and this right here, are logs and they're base 10, I can actually evaluate that on my calculator. And when I type this into my calculator, I get something that's approximately equal to 2.5 to 4 and I highly suggest that you try this as well so that you can make sure that you can replicate the same thing that we're getting here. Likewise for part B I have log base 5 of 22 this is going to be equal to log base 10 of 22 divided by log base 10 of 5 when I type this into my calculator I get something that's about 1.92 and again, please confirm this on your calculator so that you can ensure that you're getting the same thing. Now, when we looked at that slide that had the table on it, I told you that log base 10 and log base E's will produce the same result. So let's go ahead and use the exact same problems from example 1. However, this time instead of using a log base 10, let's use log base E or the natural log. So now if I take the natural log of 16 and divide it by the natural log of 3, you'll see that you also get something close to 2.524. Likewise for part B, if we take the natural log of 22 and divide it by the natural log of 5, you'll see that we get something around 1.92 again. So, to reiterate, it does not matter if you use a log base 10 or the natural log, you will produce the same result. Now from section 3.2, we talked about how log functions with a base A were really inverse functions of exponential functions with base A. So, as a result of that, we also have properties of logs. Now, we have three properties. One is called the product property, and you'll see that if we are taking the log of base A of U times V, we can actually rewrite this as log base A of U plus log base A of V. And you'll see here in a little bit that sometimes it does benefit us to rewrite something like this because it may make it easier to solve. Now we have the same thing with the natural log. Natural log of the product of u and v is equal to the natural log of u plus the natural log of v. Our second property is the quotient property. And this says if we have log base a of u divided by v, 
I'm going to convert that into log base A of U minus log base A of V. Or if I have the natural log of U divided by V, that's the same thing as saying the natural log of U minus the natural log of V. And we have a power property. And our power property tells us that if I have the log base A of U raised to the nth power, I can take this n and pull it up front and make that n times the log base A of U. Likewise, with a natural log, the natural log of U to the nth, I'm going to take that power of n, bring it up front, and I'm going to end up with n times the natural log of U. Now our next few examples are going to deal with these properties. These properties here are incredibly important when dealing with logs and natural logs. So please make sure that you understand these. And if you don't, you need to come and see me. So example three is kind of a fun example. It wants us to write each log in terms of the natural logs of two and natural logs of five. So in other words, I want to get rid of any number that was given to me and I, it can only be written as a natural log of 2 and or a natural log of 5. So let's go ahead and look at part A and see what we mean. Now, I have the natural log of 10. I know that if I'm dealing with 10 and I have the numbers 2 and 5, then I really have the natural log of 2 times 5 because 2 times 5 will give me the 10 that I had right here. Well, I know that I can rewrite the natural log of 2 and the natural log times 5. So to rewrite a product, I'm going to change this to the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 5. And you can evaluate the natural log of 10 on your calculator and then go ahead and take the natural log of 2 and add it to the natural log of 5 and you'll see that you get the exact same thing. Now part B is a little bit trickier. With this one we're going to evaluate the natural log of 5 divided by 32. Well right here I've already got a 5 so I don't really have to worry about that one. So let's first of all go ahead and rewrite our quotient as a subtraction problem. So this is going to give me the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 32. Well, I know that 32, in order to rewrite that, I can't take 5 and multiply it or add it or subtract it or even raise it to a power to get me 32. But I can take 2 and raise it to the 5th power and get 32. So I can rewrite this again as a natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 2 to the 5th. Well, based on my power property, I can rewrite this piece right here as I'm going to keep that natural log of 5 there I'm going to take this exponent and pull it down up front so that's going to give me 5 times a natural log of 2 now I have a natural log of 5 and a natural log of 2 which is what my requirements were in the original problem so this right here would be my final answer now for example 4, we have to find the exact values without using a calculator. So let's go ahead and rewrite what we've got. We have the log base 7, and I'm going to rewrite this as 7 to the 1 -fifth power. Well if I do that, I know that this exponent can be pulled down up front, which is going to give me 1 -fifth times the log base 7 of 7. And if you remember from section 3, 2, log base 7 of 7 is really 1, so I end up with 1 fifth times 1, which is really equal to 1 fifth. Likewise, for part B, I see that we are really adding with natural logs. So when we're adding, I can rewrite this as a natural log of e to the 12th times e to the 5th. When we are multiplying with the same base, we can add our exponents. So this really gives me the natural log of e to the 17th. 
Now when I take the natural log of E, these here really cancel out, and that gives me 1 times 17, which is going to give me 17. So my final answer then is 17. Now sometimes it's actually easier to expand our logs out so that we can get a more simplified expression. And to expand, that means we're going to take something like this and take a product and make it an addition problem or a quotient and make it into a subtraction problem and so on. And sometimes we need to do that so we can simplify. So let's go ahead and expand part A. Part A says that we have the log base 4 of 5x cubed y. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is this right here is all a product. So I'm going to rewrite that as the log base 4 of 5 plus the log base 4 of x cubed plus the log of base 4 of y. And the reason why I want to do that first is because I want to make sure to separate all of the terms. Now that I've done that, I see that I still have an exponent here. So I can bring that down up front. So that's really going to give me the log base 4 of 5 plus 3 times the log base 4 of x plus log base 4 of y. And notice that this term here was the only one that got that product of 3 because it was x cubed. It wasn't 5 to the third power or y cubed, it was just x cubed. Therefore, this is the only term that will have the 3 as a coefficient. Likewise, for part b, we have the natural log of a quotient. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rewrite that quotient as a subtraction problem. And that's going to give us the natural log of 3x minus 5. And the square root is really a radical exponent, or I'm sorry, a fractional exponent. So I'm going to rewrite that to the 1 half power. And then I'm going to subtract the natural log of 7. Well, I have an exponent here that needs to be brought down up front. So this is going to give me 1 half times a natural log of 3x minus 5 minus the natural log of 7. Now notice, this 3x minus 5 is in parentheses because it was really under an exponent, or I'm sorry, a radical. And even when I rewrote it, I had to keep this in parentheses because I'm not, I can't really subtract or do anything else with that uh, because it's still technically under the radical, which is shown right here with that 1 half. So this right here then would be your final answer. Okay, and the opposite of an expanding an expression would be to condense an expression. So when I condense an expression, the first thing I do is I take my powers and I apply those first. So you're kind of going in a backwards order. So here, I have a 5 out up front. I know that that has to go here. I have a power right here. That's going to have to go up here. So this is going to give me the log of x to the one-third plus the log of the quantity of x minus 3 to the fifth. Now I still have a plus right here, and I know that a plus is really a product, so I'm going to rewrite that as the log of the product, and this is really going to be the cube root of x, since it's to the one-third, times the quantity of x minus 3 to the fifth. And there's nothing else now that I can do to simplify, so this here would be the final solution for part A. I'm going to go through the same process in part B. I'm going to take this 4 and pull it up front, this 2 and pull it up front. So that gives me the natural log of the quantity of x minus 4 squared minus the natural log of x squared. And then, because of the subtraction, I know that that's really a division problem. So I'm going to rewrite that 
as the natural log of the quantity and I have x minus 4 in my numerator and that's all being squared and I'm going to divide that by x squared. Now the other thing I want you to notice is once I condense that addition or that subtraction into a product or a quotient you don't you you lose a natural log because the natural log of this whole thing is di this is different than saying the natural log of the quantity of x minus 4 squared divided by the natural log of x squared you have this is the natural log of this entire quantity so please make sure that you assign that natural log appropriately and now for part C part C is a little bit more complex but we can still handle it if we follow our order of operations and deal with the parentheses first we will end up with one-fifth times now I have no exponents inside of my parentheses or brackets but I do have a pro or I'm sorry a addition symbol which really means a product so I have the log base 3 of x times the quantity of x minus 2 and because I have this one-fifth here that's really my exponent so that means I have the log of base 3 of x times x minus 2 to the one-fifth I'm sorry the fifth not the half and if I rewrite that the one-fifth power is really the fifth root so I can really write that as the log base 3 of the fifth root of x times x minus 2 and that's as far as I can simplify you could, you could I guess technically distribute that x on the inside and that's okay too um, you will have a few of these to do in your homework so if you have questions please make sure to write them down and let me know and in this video I'm going to do something a little bit different. I want you to give your best effort on these two practice problems before you get to class. I will be checking these first thing. So please try your best. If you get stuck, I want you to write down where you got stuck and continue to try. I want your best effort on these. It's an expansion problem and a condensing problem. So please, please, please try these. And with that, have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks.